Three, two, one. What's going on, everyone? You're watching Ash on Comics. My name is Ash, and it is story time, episode 117. Yeah, isn't that number significant? Isn't that Master Chief's designation number? Um, yeah, anyways, good evening. It is Thursday, what is it, 25th? Man, February 25th. Can you believe that? Mm. Tonight's stream brought to you by Heineken. For when you want to drink a beer with a green can. Because you're doing a stream about a character who's named Green in his name. It has nothing to do with beer. And he's not... From Holland, where this beer is made. But Heineken, drink it, and you can get it cheap. And it's better than Coors. <sighs> How are you guys doing? Um, we're here to talk a bunch of nonsense. And then talk some comics. What do you think? Um I got a timer. I got a new experiment I'm gonna do. I know you guys a couple complaints. I, I get it. I go in the weeds. I talk a lot. Some people come in. They're just like, read the damn comic, you monkey. We're not here to listen to you talk about your nonsense. So I got this little timer. And uh, I'm going to set it. And right now it's beeping a lot. And you can hear. See? This is proof that I have it. And unfortunately, you have to just do it in increments of one. And I'm going to start right now. And when that goes off, it's a 30-minute timer. When that goes off... And we're going to read the comic. So you know right now, if you're like, I don't want to listen to Ash talk about a bunch of nonsense. Put right now, time it, 30 minutes, come back. We'll be getting into the comic. Now, if you like listening to Ash talk a bunch, bunch of bullshit, then you can stick around. Or you can just hang out with your friends in the chat. This is not just a show about me. This is about you guys. You guys make it all possible. I love inter interacting with you. The whole reason I do this show pretty much is to hang out with you guys. I don't make any money despite, uh, you know, my fake ads for beer. <laughs> Heineken's not giving me any money. Uh, as a matter of fact, they're probably sending me a, a bill right now to even use their name. To... <clears throat> Anyways, that's what, that's what I'm going to try to do. So if you're new to the show... Welcome. Good to have you. Let me give you a little background. I haven't done this in a while. I like comics before they sucked. I like talking about comics. I'm doing a show where I was like, you know, I'm going to read some comics live on the air and we can talk about them. But I don't want to just like pop on YouTube and just start reading a comic like some robot drone. That's not what I'm here for. I like to talk about stuff. So I hang out with you guys. Plus, it lets people roll in. So. I don't just start and then I'm reading a comic and you don't find out about it because YouTube doesn't alert you for like the first 15 minutes of the stream. So this gives some time for people to be like, oh, hey, Ash is streaming. And then they come in. So I like to talk. I, you guys are posting. I address the chat and, you, and we just have a discussion. And sometimes because I like to gibber gabber, blah, blah, blah all night long. I just keep talking. Next thing I know, it's been over an hour. And then RDV is like, read a comic. And then I read a comic. So I'm putting this timer on because the, the goal was never to do that. It, the goal was to talk for about a half hour and then read books. And I just, I'm really bad at that. So I got this timer and you're going to hear it. it's loud timer. It's going to beep. So you'll be able, you'll hear it when it goes off. And so you'll know I'm not cheating. And then uh, we'll read the book. And I figure I can always talk more afterwards. Uh, I don't, I don't do all the talking afterwards because like I said, I want people to have time to come in and not be like, oh, geez, you're halfway through it already and i missed the first half of the story so i think this is a good compromise and uh that way now anyone that can complain anyone that says oh, i don't want now you know exactly uh, let's see what the timer says so 27 minutes from now 27 minutes that's what the timer says all right let's uh see if I gotta get my windows working right I feel like such a zoomer, or not a zoomer, a boomer. That's how it works. I can't even get those terms correct. Um, my name's Ash. Not really. It's a pseudonym. 
It's one of those things like the young kids call an online handle, an alias, an IGN. That stands for in-game name for all you millennials out there. <laughs> That's an old term. Um, RDV is first. Holy F-balls. What? RDV is first and Eric is second? What does what is going on? Marani is third. Good to see you guys. RDV says, hey, Eric, do you think Ash will censor this comic? This comic has nudity. It's a DC comic. I shouldn't have to censor a DC comic. They would never show like something like Batman's penis or something, right? Oh, whoops. Hmm. Ronnie says, I am here, and this is a righteous comic to be re -read to be reading on story time. Well, I'm glad you approved, Ronnie. You're one of the reasons that I added it to my my TBR shelf, as I'll call it from now on, the to be read. I have several books that I want to read for the stream. Um one of the ones I really want to read for the stream one day, I'm looking forward to it, is Batman Year One. I just don't want to read it for six people. <laughs> like I got to find a way that like maybe have a little bit of an audience and I want to do it justice. That's going to be a tough book to read because a lot of that lettering is done in cursive. And, uh, you know, while I grew up in an age where we had to all learn cursive, it's not something that gets used. I haven't, I haven't written in cursive in 30 years. Even reading cursive sometimes is a challenge, but so that's going to be tough when I'm reading out loud, when I stumble on words, I can't I have to, I'll, I'll figure it out, but it's, you know, when you do it in real time, it's, like, it's whatever. RDV says this com comic is problematic. Well, that's nothing the CW can't fix. Uh, Eric Breen says, don't worry, Mranya, I'll be outraged on your behalf. Ash should read an empowering comic like Lumberjanes. Hmm. Maybe I will add that to the TBR shelf. Ronnie says, I'm not outraged. I was more outraged when Sue Dibney was murdered solely as a catalyst for the storyline because they couldn't murder a known character like Lois. Well, that's sometimes what red shirts are there for. So that you don't murder Kirk. You gotta let the red shirts die. Ah, Snatch Face the Fool is here. Good to see you, my friend. He says, I can't wait until Ash does Nubia real one. I am not doing, oh my God, I'm not doing that. Nope. It, nope. It's hateful and wrong. It's not even like bad in a fun way like America. You know, I can read America. We can all have a laugh. It's And it's just, it's just classic entertainment. It's great. But Nubia is just hate inspired racism. It's ugly. It's the kind of book that I think future generations will look back in the past the same way we look back in the past at old Nazi um, fiction books, you know, um, that were written by real Nazis, you know, the ones that lived in Germany um, and promoted their politics. And we, re we look at that stuff today and we go, oh, my God, that's just awful. It's hateful and ugly. I think we're going to be looking at those future generations. I mean, it'll probably be like 50 years from now, but they'll be like, oh, my God, what was wrong with people in the freaking 20s? <laughs> like, yikes. I think history is going full circle, man. This is this is what happened a, a century ago. Socialism rose around the 20s, at least in the West. And uh, in the 30s, it started taking over Germany. And we know what happened by the end of the 30s. Um, it doesn't take long. And that seems to be what's happening here. It's just a hateful, hateful ideology. Um, and Nubia, man, it's... If you're, if you're curious, the reason I'm not going to do it besides what I just said is uh, our boy Zach, Comics Matter, he covered this book, and he's pretty much said everything I, I, I'll need to say. I don't... He did the same thing, by the way, a really good series that he did multiple parts, was that... that Batman, that young Bruce Wayne book that was the young adult book. Who boy. And I was like, I can't, there's no reason for me to do this anymore. He, he did it. But if I was going to do a bad book, I'd rather do that one. That one at least had a lot of cringe that you could have fun with. It was, it was, 
you know, there's two kinds of wokeness. There's the kind that is just like obvious people are just misled and they're woke because that's just what they believe and they're just their heads all in a jumble. And you can have fun with that because they write cringe and they think that they're just being really virtuous and like, look at me and I'm empowering women. I'm doing good. And you're just like, oh, shake your head. No, you, you know, but I think that their intention. Then there's the kind that are done by really nasty people that are really are racist. And I think that that's what this Wonder Woman book is. This Nubia book, I should say. Um, it just, it, they're just different attitudes. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Eric says, no, you don't understand. It's current year. You have to be retroactively outraged. <laughs> uh, Nubia. Now that's a comic that respects current year sensibilities. Oh my God. Um, Marani says, Eric, the fact that you're telling me to be outraged is so patriarchal. <laughs> telling a woman how she should feel? Talk about privilege, says Snatchface. Eric responds, allow me to mansplain. <laughs> you guys have a great conversation going on. Um, Snatchface, from what I've seen in the book, art-wise, I weep for the trees who gave their lives for the papers printed on. Oh, my God. The art is just astonishingly terrible like it's just ugly in every way it's ugly on a physical level like you just stare at it and go oh my god and then you read it and you just go man this is ugly on a spiritual level too it's just this is just terrible terrible um uh, let's see when i says oh wait you said mansplain not manscape that's right oh geez gross uh RDV locks of George and Martha's washing hair being auctioned for charity. Eh, who would want someone's hair? Uh, how are they even getting that hair? Are those graves protected by historical societies and laws? Ed says, quarter after, must be getting close to story time with Ash on comics. Yeah, you know what? I always have an excuse, but they're real excuses, I promise you. They're not just made up shit. Um, so today I was like, I didn't reboot my computer today. I was gonna, and I was like, you know what? If I reboot, it's going to cause me to be late. So I'm not going to reboot because I rebooted it this morning before I left work. So I was like, it's, it's fine. This is fine. I haven't done anything hardly on it. should be fine. Except when I went to log into Streamlabs, it's like, oh, Streamlabs is uh, reset your connection. Because, you know, you have to connect it to YouTube. You have to log in. You have to log into your YouTube account through the stream lab so they can talk to each other so I can do what we're doing right now. Now, normally once you do that, it just, it saves it. So every time I launch stream lads, it's good to go. But this time I was ready to go and I was, I was on time. I promise you I was early because I even put the time for the stream 10 05. And I was like, good, I'll be this. I only do 10 05 just to be a buffer. I was ready at 10, except the stream labs popped up and said, no, we no longer have your login stuff it's it's expired you need to redo it so i was like ah oh, damn it so i click on the button to log in which opens your browser but the problem is my default browser is still chrome but i moved away from using chrome i'm now using a browser called dissenter which is the custom browser made by the guys that run gab you know that site gab i found it when i started using gab when you know the party anyways it's a cool browser it's built on the Brave browser. If you've heard of Brave, Brave's a cool browser. I just wanted to get away from Google Chrome. Um, they actually work just like Google Chrome. I think they're actually built on the same open source content. So they, if you like Google Chrome, you're like, but Ash, I like Google Chrome. What, well, you can still use Brave or Dissenter, and it's essentially the same thing, uh, but only it's not connected to, it's Google Chrome, but not connected to Google to spy on you. <laughs> <laughs> think of it that way um and dissenter takes a lot of the privacy stuff that brave introduced and goes like even a even a step further and it's really cool like i don't even need to install an ad blocker anymore it's cool like it just blocks everything doesn't doesn't track uh, i love i like dissenter quite a bit i'm very pleased with it but it wasn't my default browser yet because i only did you know so when i anyways make a long story short when it tried to go connect to Google, Chrome just sat there and hung and hung and was like, well, I'm just thinking, hold on. And I was like, Jesus, like five minutes later, actually it was like longer because I looked at my watch. Oh, my, I don't have a watch. I looked at the time on my computer and I was like, oh, look, it's 5.07 and I'm still not connected to Google. 
to log into this damn thing. So I had literally did this the whole time. I went into the center, made it my default browser, closed the browser, restarted the browser, closed everything down, closed Streamlabs down, rebooted Streamlabs, went into the settings, reconnected to try to log in, and did it faster than Google Chrome would connect to Google, which it should be connected all the time. Anyways, you don't care about it. It's so boring. This is why I eat up my time. Now I'm looking and I only have 16 minutes left and I just ate up my time talking about nothing. Um, uh, let's see. RDV has sent a link. Uh, I don't know what this link. What is this link that you're sending, RDV, this mysterious thingamabobber? Um, You know, the purple room is open, guys. For, so, for those of you guys that are purple members, you could just come in and talk on a mic uh, and make yourself heard. But uh, we won't discuss that here, I guess. Uh, let's see. President's Day Sale in sales include auction of artifacts from actual presidents oh this is the hair all right so this is what rdv was talking about um interesting okay uh, i guess if i just had tons of freaking money that i didn't know what to do with i maybe would want this um Hey, look, I see an ad for putting the sticker on your car. This reminded me, I finally got my car registered. Uh, some of you may have known, like I was, California has charged me a left kidney to register my car for the privilege of driving. So it's all done. I went down, did the, completed the registration today. Only $1,400 for the pleasure of driving on Gavin, Gavin Newsom's personal roads. Thank you, Gavin Newsom. Fourteen hundred dollars. So happy. Um, but thank you all out there that were praying for me to make sure that I got through this because I was really worried. I didn't know how much it was going to be. I thought it was going to be way more, um, even than that. I was really because California is stupid. Um, all right, I don't need this. This is a dumb website, RDB. No, I thank you for sharing. Um, Let's see. I need to get, let's see, uh, scroll down. Eric said, you said it was episode 117 at exactly 117. Spooky. Wow. I plan it that way. I'm just that good. I'm a straw. Uh, RDB's saying he's going to be right back. He needs to fetch an ice cold Coors banquet. Yeah, you go. You know, I wish I could. I wouldn't mind drinking eight cores. I just don't want to buy like a whole six pack or God forbid a 12 pack of it. Um, Ed, Ed Brewers is working. If you can call it that you talking about me or are you talking about yourself? I don't know. Uh, RDB says ash on beeping monkeys. Uh, ash will read a comic in 30 minutes or it's free. <laughs> nice. Uh, way behind on the text chat. I can tell. Um, Jimmy says, this is a good series. Oh, there you heard it first, kids. This is the Jimmy seal of approval. Chink. Um, tonight, Ash frees the nipple. <laughs> uh, Joe Corallo's here. He says, I was just talking about Grell on another stream earlier tonight. Well, maybe that's what caused me to think about it. Maybe that mental energy transferred through the interwebs and connected to my brain. And I was like, oh. Um... I was honestly, I was going to read something else, but I was like, you know, I think I need a little bit more notification <laughs> that I'm, that I'm going to do that. Um, so we'll, we'll do that next time and I'll leave you in a little suspense of what it's going to be. It's going to be something cool and exciting. Um, let's see. Jimmy says he's reading Torso by Brian Michael Badass. Eisernam. Make sure you qualify that, Jimmy. 
<laughs> you should put I'm reading Torso by the Eisner multi Eisner award winning Brian Michael Bendis. And then put goat. Put goat after that. Uh, <laughs> it's actually something I have never seen from him. It is crazy good and feels like a really good Brew Baker crime book. Wow. I'm not sure how much I believe that, but um, I hear they have some pretty good mind-altering drugs in the Pacific Northwest where Jimmy lives. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy that you're happy, my friend. Um, let's see. Rania is welcoming Joe to the stream. Um, damn it, Rania. I, I wanted to make sure he felt unwelcomed, and now you had to roll out the red carpet. No, I'm just kidding. Welcome, Joe. Thanks for showing up and uh, hanging out with us. Uh, Ash, you can go for years and we won't age according to DC. <laughs> um, no, Eric, you m mix that up. It's only the characters in the comics that don't age, not us. That, it, that, do you get that now? Um, let's see. RDB says Generations Force was educational. Sure, sure. Uh, let's see. I write in cursive every day, Ash, says Marania. I'm not going to comment on that because um, I like not having my face slapped. Let's see. Uh, da -da -da. Good to see you, says Tehillim. Good to see you, my friend. Hope that you're doing well and getting ready to enjoy a good book. Um, da -da -da. He says Torso is incredible. Tehillim is another big Brian Michael Bendis fan. Um Apparently, oh, only the independent stuff that he does. Strange that strange that Brian Michael Bendis seems to only be able to write independence. I don't know how that works. Uh, I don't actually know because I won't try it because I never read anything good by him. So I've given up. I've given up. I have think 12 times is the charm. It's like, look, I've, I've read so many books by you. You're batting zero. I just don't need to read anymore to think... <laughs> It's like, no, but Ash, really, the the 30th book you read will be good. Okay. Um, but if you guys, if, look, here's the deal. That's just my opinion. I'm a, I'm a strong, opinionated dude. And if you like it, you like it. Maybe I'm wrong. I've been wrong before. Once or twice. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not going to admit it. Comics. Or sorry, I, always, I hate that. J Jimmy says Cap is 80 next month. I'm not keeping track, but it sounds about right. He's one of the uh, old-timey Marvel characters that existed pre-Marvel. Uh, making ramen while Ash yaks away. Mm, I like ramen. Too bad it tears up my bowels. That's the problem with me. Uh, I love ramen, but... I, I used to do, like, two packets of ramen when I'd make it. Nice big bowl. I can't eat it. Like, I... It just... Yeah, it. I won't talk about the bathroom exploits that I have afterwards. That's gross. But if I eat one, I'm still okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Skip and Tosh is the Jeff Johns of streamers, says Tehillim. Okay. Um, Eric says, Bendis is better than Brubaker. Or is that that's a greater than symbol? Bendis greater than Brubaker. Well, if Eric says it, it must be true, so... Uh, he says, yes, I'm drunk. Oh, no, Eric's off the wagon. Uh, we need an intervention. Mm. <sighs> Writing cursive is almost a lost art, like drawing comic book pages on paper and boards with pencil and ink. Dude, I tell people, if you're a comic book artist, do not do digital. For, <laughs> comic book artists make dick. Unless, unless you're like a Sean Gordon Murphy or, you know, one of these big duck, big guys, uh, Greg Capullo, Capullo, whatever. Like you're a big, you're gonna make some money. But here's the way. Do you know why Sean Gordon Murphy really makes money? Because he sells all the pages of his White Knight books for thousands of dollars a piece. So you got a twenty something page book. Let's just say you average a thousand dollars a page. You sold, and it's only twenty pages. That's twenty thousand dollars for a month's work over and above what you got paid 
and over and above the royalties that you collect afterwards. Now, let's say you did it digitally. Hey, I, I, can I get the, uh, I want to buy this original art for the page, page 30 of, you know, 13 of this issue. Uh, there is no original art. It's all a digital file. Oh, that's money down the drain. Yes, yes, I know the advantages that digital can bring lots of different things. And, oh, I can draw so much. I'm more productive with digital. I can cut and paste this and do all these shortcuts that digital helps me do. Yep, sure. Is it is it worth all that money to you, though? Like, is it? I mean, I, I know not everyone's collecting $1,000 a page. But let's say even if you got $200 a page for your books. Most comics, original art, even if you're like, Joe Shitty, uh, artist, you know, on uh, drawing, whatever, some crappy D-list Marvel book, original page of art, a couple hundred bucks, like that you can still get it because people just like, it's just original art from a, a book. I mean, even if it's a hundred bucks, that's still 2000 extra dollars that you could be doing. You know, I just, I just don't understand it. Draw on real paper. <laughs> That's what I would do. Anyways, Comics with Jimmy says, yes, we know you are white, Breen. Oh, no. Eric, you're canceled. How can anyone be white these days? Um, Let's see. Dylan, we need an Ash on Manga channel. Uh, I can't because I don't really... I don't do manga that much. I, I mean, here and there, I'll read one. But that'd be silly. Um, yeah, I, I try to talk about things that I know about. I don't know everything. I mean, I, I sound really opinionated about things, and I am. I have very strong opinions. But usually the reason I'm very strongly opinionated is because I've talked a lot about it already. I've been exposed to it for a long time. I've talked to other people who know more about it I, I that's why i like talking to people like eric breen because he knows so much more about comics than i do so i learn things sometimes i'll disagree with him and then i'll argue and if he proves me wrong then that reinforces my knowledge and now i'm like oh shit i was wrong about this but not anymore now i know better and so then my opinion may have changed but my opinion now becomes stronger because it's you know it's it's been tempered like steel um, Jimmy says, it's really hard for me to read manga, man. Don't use me as an example. You're just reading the wrong manga, Jimmy. Uh, the, I, I tell people this all the time. Like manga is like every other medium, TV, movies, books, novels, whatever. There is a ton of it. That's crap. And then there's a small portion of it. That's really good. Right. You can there's hundreds of channels nowadays that you can get tons of streaming services and the amount of stuff that's like really good television, very small. Um, so but if you are just exposed to some of the shit, you know, like I started watching the uh, Arrow TV show on CW, you may never want to read Green Arrow ever because you go, well, this is <laughs> this is Arrow. Yikes. <laughs> Oops. Um but, you know, if you pick up the wrong manga book, you might go, eh, this is not for me. But you tried the wrong one, perhaps. So I would encourage people to do some research. Try to find something that is fitting towards your tastes. Because um, if, you, if, you, if you jump in onto something that just counter towards what you already like, it's less likely you're going to, you know, uh, adapt to it and love it. Um, and go for something light. Um, I'll tell you what, man, I, I, I recommend if you're a comic fan, if you're a mainstream comic fan, and, and I know this is totally cliche to say these days after so many years, so it's oversaturated, popular, read My Hero Academia. It is, it is comics like we miss them. It's comics with real heroes, real virtue stories, real stories about justice real like like uh, discussions in a metaphorical sense of of morality and doing the right thing 
and, and what it costs and when you should do it. And it just, and it's simple. It doesn't try to reinvent the wheel. It just focuses on what works with characters that are genuinely good people. Not every character is good. Some of the characters are, you know, in it for themselves. They're just selfish. They, you know, one of the main rivals to one of the main characters is a pure vainglory. He just wants to be the best. He wants to be better than everyone else. He wants everyone to look at him and say, that dude is the best. Um, he doesn't actually care. And then the main hero character, Deku, is is like a baby Superman. Like he just he's just the purest of heart, goody goody two shoes, nerdy boy, fails all the time, but just has a heart of gold and it's, it can be cliche, but it's done so well. And if that's what you like about comics, if you like the concept that like Stan Lee really hammered on the great power comes great responsibility, the idea of like you can't stand by and let injustice happen if you have the ability to do something. That was kind of his theme and pretty much most all of his characters. The then this is a story for you. It's just really well. It's so many characters with so many different viewpoints about this that you're almost guaranteed to find a character that matches yours, right? That speaks to you and goes, you know what? I don't really relate to Deku. The guy's way too goody good. Like, eh. but this character, that's how I think. And that's one of the magics of this book. I think it's a fan it's fantastic. Well, it's fun. Totally fun. Totally approachable. Okay, I'm done. I'm done promoting that. Four more minutes until the timer goes off. Wrong. Well, probably four minutes when you type that, so I can't say you're wrong. Three, two, one. There we go, kids. It is now time to get into today's comic. Um, let me just finish up a couple of last chats. Uh, I read some MHA. It's eh. You got to get past the beginning parts. Uh, the beginning parts of MHA is a little rough because it, it's a lot of setup. But once Deku gets going and you start to see. Well, and then then again, you know what? It's not Brian Michael Bendis, Jimmy. So maybe <laughs> maybe you'll never like it. Um, Tehillin says, don't you mean watch MHA? How about you read MHA manga seeing how you saw an anime form? I've done both. I've read, I haven't read a ton of the manga, but I have read some of the manga for sure. Actually, I read the manga before I saw the anime, but I only read a little bit of it. Then I jumped in the anime and then I just binged it for all it was worth. And then I didn't go back to the manga and they're both really good. That's why I said read the manga because I really do do like it. Um, Tlum says, Ash never read the My Hero Macadamia manga. Well, that's not true, but thanks for making false claims. Um, Tlum says, no MHA manga in Ashes Halls. Yes, I haven't bought any physical MHA manga, so that was never in a hall. But you can keep trying to insinuate that I'm lying. Um, that irritates me. Um, I have never given you reason to do that, but by all means. Um, real quick, um, sales this is the part that I always cover. You can get Young Avengers and Runaway Sales, two comic creations i would rather forget um but there was one thing that i saw that was pretty interesting a bunch of crap oh dc's having a greatest jokes sale so uh, look at look at the selections right here on this the very front page um of all the dc stuff you can get that might be worth checking out and i thought there was something else oh look at that marvel war of the realm sale remember that great event that just changed everything at marvel how could you, if you missed out on this event, this is like a, this is a can't, no, don't, don't, not even for, look at this, 250 a book, oh, who cares, oh, Bla this is a great series, Blade Runner 2019, 12 issue series, written by the guy who wrote Blade Runner 2049, it's very Blade Runner, if you are a Blade Runner fan, if you go, I like Blade Runner, and I want really good Blade Runner, this is as authentic as it gets, um, Highly recommend it. Uh, Green Arrow. Dun, dun, dun. All right. I promise. No lingering. Mm. 
surrounding my Heineken can is my Yoda koozie. You guys can't see it, but it says, do or do not. There is no try. So that's what I must do. I must do read a Green Arrow book. Now, I disclaimer, <clears throat> I've never read these books, so I'll be cold reading them today. Whenever I do a cold read, sometimes I make more mistakes. Uh, <laughs> I speak the wrong characters. Sometimes, because I read panel by panel, some of these older books, they're not digitized correctly. I'll do my best. <laughs> be forgive. Please forgive me. Um, Melissa says, sorry I'm late. Congrats on whoever was first. Well, welcome just in time. RDV is going to go play Cyberpunk. I have, I'll go have fun, RDV. Um, playing your silly video games, we're going to read some good comics. At least I hope it's good comics. If it's not, you can blame Marania. And here we go. hunters are dying off oh you can still see them if you know where to look behind the smiles and the masks and the poster grant or, sorry that, sorry and, see this is a tough one cut <laughs> the lettering in these old school lettering can be tough to read on it so take two behind the smiles and the masks and the foster grants Born to the concrete jungles, the way their primitive ancestors belong to the forest. They seek the same things. Food, shelter, comfort. As any hunter gather society, there are those who have worked out a system of barter. Hi. Hi, honey. You want a party? You have something I want? I have something you want. Pause. Um, also, disclaimer, apparently, from I've been warned, there's some mature content in this book. I've never read it myself, so there might be some nudity, some foul language. As always, Ash on Comics is not for kids. Parental discretion is advised. Carrying on. There are all kinds of hunters. Some hunt for sport. Hi, sugar. You look like you could use some company. Some hunt to survive. And some just like to watch things die. Why? Seattle slasher strikes 18th victim. Newspaper headline reads. The Seattle slasher again. God. Aren't they ever going to stop this guy? What's the date on this? Last week, hmph. You sure miss a lot of the news when you're moving across country. This one's right up your alley. Robin Hood killer claims fourth victim. Must be something in the water. What do a stockbroker, a garage mechanic, a farmer, and a druggist have in common? Dentures, arthritis, and hemorrhoids? Yeah. They are all they are all in about the same age bracket. Maybe that's how he picks them. Either that or his dog told him to do it. New York, Texas, Wisconsin, Idaho. He's heading west. Could be he's like the slasher doesn't need a reason 
just likes it. Who knows? Someone knows. Someone always sees. He's just not talking. Yet. If you'll give me a hand with the rest of these, we'll be ready to open in the morning. Sure thing. Let me know if you can run into any classifieds, okay? You've got a nice little place here, but I still need a job. Maybe one I can hold on to for a change. Honestly, Oliver, if you'd give yourself half a chance, that's part of what this move is all about. My God, she's on something. You better call an ambulance. Can you handle her? She's in more danger of hurting herself than me. And Broadway, about 16 or 17, I guess. My name, Oliver Queen. It's okay, honey, I've got you. I don't know, I'll see. No, no ID. Looks like crack. Would it be all right if I went with her? There's really not much you could do, Miss Lance, but if you like... Oliver... Do you mind taking care of... Go ahead, Dinah. I'll finish up here. You're wasting your time, officer. She was their friend, but they don't know nothing. She got some bad crack, but they didn't see nothing. She just had some bad luck, but it don't mean nothing. It couldn't happen to them. This place looks nice. How is she? I think she'll be all right. They're transferring her to a detox center. Her name's Rita. She's 17. She's been on that type of stuff for almost two years. I think I've picked up something on her connection, Oliver. It could be a major lead on the cocaine trade in the Pacific Northwest. Want some help? If you don't mind, I think I'd like to do this one on my own. I understand. Hey, I've been busy while you were out. Come on, I'll give you the grand tour. Welcome to Sherwood Florist, my lady. Moving up from our spacious arboretum, we come to the second floor. Ladies, lingerie, antiques, and fine furnishings, everything from my lady's discerning tastes. Yours. Third floor. Men's smelly socks, scattered underwear, old magazines, and leftover pizza. Mine. Well, mine's not finished yet. But ours is. Well, come on. Oh, this is where the magic happens. Ronnie says, I love the art in this book. The gray panels where it looks like a pastel drawing work for certain passages in the story. Yeah, the art's very good in this book. The coloring is an interesting choice. I know this was a was kind of designed like a graphic novel in three parts. Um, so I kind of forgive it, but the the watercoloring colors is was very kind of different for the time. Dinner was wonderful. Thank you. It's from an old family recipe. I didn't know your family was Chinese. I never said it was my family. You did dinner, I'll do the dishes. It's a deal. I have one more thing to finish. Now it's home. Sometimes I think you love that old painting more than anything. Not the painting, what it stands for. A time when things were simpler, life was sweeter, and death further off. They're gone, aren't they? The memories? The memories are still there, but those old days of glory are gone for good. What happens? Do we change? Or do the changes happen without us, leaving us behind? I don't feel any different. 
but I know I'm not the same. I'm a grandfather, for God's sake. I mean, think about it. Roy is as close to a son as I could have, and now he's a father. That makes me... We'll never have those days back again, will we? No matter how hard we try. I know this guy, Howard Hill. He was the one who did all the trick shooting for the movie Robin Hood. God, when I was a kid, I loved that film. I met him years after, on a yacht off the California coast. We had a mutual friend. I remember he practiced every day and he used an old longbow instead of a recurve or a modern compound. I asked him why and he said he simply wasn't a good enough sh archer to shoot them well, so he s stuck to the basics. Maybe I forgot that somewhere. I let the gimmicks and trick arrows do the job for me until I forgot how to do it any other way. I lost the edge. Oh, man. Hold on a second. Amazon just crapped out on my browser. Oop, oop, oop. Gotta log back in, even though you're right in the middle of the reading a book. We forgot who you were. Because... We're you know we're not just the biggest company in the world. Apparently, we can't make a website run correctly. Oh my goodness! And then it's like doesn't remember where I was. It's like uh, again, I'll go. Uh, okay, thanks for logging back in, Ash. Now what? Can you take me right where I was? Do you have to start it all over? Yes, of course you do. It only does this on the web page, by the way. Like the, the app works so much better. Let's see. How far back was I? All right. Yeah, he's okay. So he was saying. Maybe I forgot that somewhere. I let the gimmicks and the trick arrows do the job for me until I forgot how to do it any other way. I lost the edge. It's different when you have to rely on yourself and your own skills to survive. On that same trip, the night after I talked to Hill, in fact, I was on deck, drowning in my self-pity and gin. They said later that it must have been a high wave that took me overboard. I don't know. Tell you the truth, I think I just fell off. After that, it's pretty hazy, but I wound up on a small island. This is going to be it, the test to see if a guy who couldn't balance a checkbook well enough to keep a corporate corporation together could stay alive on his own without credit cards and expensive accounts. The island was full of birds and feral sheep, but I damn near starved before I succeeded in making a bow that would shoot straight. And then I had to learn to shoot it. I raided bird's nests for eggs and ate whatever I thought would keep me alive. Some of it I can't recommend, but I did the job and I learned. I learned to track. I learned to watch, to study my quarry's habits and anticipate its next move. I learned to wait until I was absolutely sure of my shot. And I learned to kill. You know, that scared me the most because of the way it made me feel. Not because I hated it, but because I loved it. Rejoiced it. Rejoiced in it in a, in a way primitive hunters must have celebrated their kill because it meant staying alive for another day. Something that serious doesn't seem right to do it for fun. When I left that island, I swore I'd never kill again. And I kept that oath. Except for that one time. That's why I won't hunt animals. But I am a hunter. That's the one thing I learned on that island. 
The one thing I'm really good at. That's what I forgot. The basics. You know, they say there were pirates or something using that island, and I fought them off single-handedly when they came back. The stuff of legends. Sorry to inform my historians that there were only two of them checking a marijuana crop. And I captured them while they were stoned. Hey, man, be cool. Oh, bummer. A green arrow. Hell, after sampling their crops and a few magic mushrooms, those guys were seeing green everything. I dumped them and their shipment at a Coast Guard station and headed for home without identifying myself. Want to hear a funny one? I didn't stick around because I didn't want to get involved. The press pickled it up, embellished it here and there, and before you know it, I'm some kind of Robin Hood. Yeah, Robin Hood. That struck a chord somewhere deep inside me. I figured what the hell I had money, time, and irresponsibility. It could be fun, and so I became what they wanted me to be. Green Arrow. And damn, t'was fun. Right up to the point where it cost me my fortune, my friends, and damn near my son. I've been wandering ever since looking for that part that's missing. The part I forgot. The basics. Hey. Where'd you go? I can't be that boring. Well, am I talking to myself here? Well, I identify with Green Arrow in this panel for sure. He's like my new spirit animal. That's not really an animal. Uh, <laughs> Ronnie loves Oliver's shirt. All right, uh, let's move on <laughs> before I get myself in trouble. I am talking to myself here. Bad sign, Oliver. Might as well save the expenses and, sorry, take two. Might as well save the expense and humiliation of years in the nursing home. Oh man, sometimes when you when you read comics this way and you can only see one frame at a time, you can't your eyes can't peek ahead. These shots just appear and it's just great. Just like wah wah. Oops, all right. I've gotten a little overzealous. Oh, that's even oh darn it, I ruined it. Ah, that was good. Good one, Mike. Mike Grell. Good scene transition. Hey, Grandpa. How about one for the old days? I didn't know you still had that outfit. I never throw away the old stuff, as long as there's still some action in it. Oh man, look at this. He's carrying her upstairs. Where's the outrage? So toxic masculine. Oh, sorry. Moving on. Cold. Why the hell does it have to be so cold? Like the rain isn't bad enough. A few more nights of this, and I'm going to need a week in Palm Springs just to work the chill out. Christ, I wish something would happen. Hi, boys. How are they hanging? 
tired of the leers and the wisecracks and smiling at the street scum that make me want to puke. Tired of putting myself on display like a piece of meat in a butcher shop. Now there's an interesting analogy. 18 girls so far. Come back in a few years, kid. Are we ever going to catch this creep? I hope the bastard tries. So sorry, sweetie. Not my type. Jesus. What if it's a woman? I wonder if they thought of that. <gasps> hey, where'd she go? Gina! Shit! Move it! Oh, God! Marry me, Dinah. And screw up a good relationship? No. I'm serious. I know. I love you more than anything in this world. And I love you, Oliver. Sometimes so much it scares me. Then... We've been together a long time. Longer than some marriages last these days. Do you know why? Because we give each other exactly what we need. Companionship, privacy, support, independence, commitment, freedom, and fantastic sex. What's missing, Oliver? Why is it you suddenly need more? Maybe I've been stricken with my own mortality. I'm going to be 43 years old this week. Somewhere I have a grandchild sort of, but I don't have a child of my own. Roy's a hell of a kid, but he's not mine. Not really. I want to have kids, Dinah. I want us to be a family. I was never ready for it or capable of commitment before, but now I... What is it? Oliver? I... I don't want to have children. Come on, you love kids. Yes. Well? That's why I'm not going to have any. What we do is important, Oliver. Not just to ourselves, but to a whole lot of people who depend on us to hold the line. We're in a deadly dangerous business. You put your life on the line every time you put on that mask. When you go out on the street, you know there's a chance you're not coming back. That's part of the attraction, the thrill, the danger. I feel it too, more than you might think. It's in our blood. I wouldn't ask you to give it up. And you'd better not ask me. But it's not like the old days of catching burglars and bank robbers. There's a different breed on the streets these days. They're not hunters, they're predators. They kill to cover up a petty robbery. And these are the small-time crooks. What about the guys with the bigger guns? Global dreams, the drug smugglers, the terrorists, the Arafats and the Qaddafis. I love you, Oliver, and I'd love to make babies with you. But I won't make orphans. Turn the page. Uh, 
Oh, come on. Sorry. Technical difficulties again. <laughs> Stupid comicsology. Let's try the one page. Oh. Yeah, it is working on the one page. Or it was. There we go. All right. Sorry for the hold up. Continuing on. Quite a dungeon you've got here. It's still a little cluttered. Last time I saw something like this, Jack Benny was on his way to his vault. Happy birthday. I know it's a little early, but I might not be around for much for a few days. I'm going to check out that kid's lead on the Coke connection. Anyways, I thought you could use this. I modeled it after your painting. It's great. Thank you. It's a bit more practical for Seattle weather. You're always looking after me, aren't you? Always. Don't want you catching cold. Men are such babies when they get sick. Dinah, just make sure you take as good as care of yourself. Always. That's me hitting the button because it won't turn the page. All right, well, this is a good time to go while I'm trying to fix things. Look at the chat. <laughs> RDV says, did Ash say something? Uh, Melissa says, this comic is better than the CW garbage version. <laughs> well, to be fair, I don't think CW is adapting Longbow Hunters. Um, uh, I miss the classic pre-52 Green Arrow. Now, I will admit, I've never been a Green Arrow fan. I don't really know anything about Green Arrow. I did just start watching the CW show because... I was doing, I've been playing that, uh, that guy's, I told you guys I've been playing that game, um, that I'm addicted to Valheim. Um, and there's a lot of like, there's a lot of like downtime or periods of time with low intensity. So it's, I, it's good. I just put it on my second monitor as I'm playing. So, and I don't want to put on a good show that would require a lot of attention. So it works out well for that purpose. And I've always been curious about this show. I'll talk about more about the show after the, the comic reading. Um, let's see. Eric says, could this comic be any more misogynist? I can't even with this. Uh, it's a miracle. Ash YouTube has not shut you down for the stream for nudity. Uh, it's not that much nudity, really. It's very, very, this is very mild stuff. And YouTube, oh my God. Now, if I had my channel flagged as safe for kids... Yeah, then that would be a problem. But I make sure to check. This is not for kids. Um, Shofar 7 au says he must have marked a stream as 18 plus. You are correct. And also welcome to the channel. Uh, RDV is outraged. This comic is a real page turner. Psych. Uh, I get the joke. Get it? Because you can't turn the page. <sighs> Moving on. To find the predator, you look for the prey. Headlines in the newspaper say, Slasher slays again. Seattle Gravedigger, latest victim of the Robin Hood killer. The vast grazing herds that provide the basis for the food chain. It's a myth that predators prey only on the weak. Mostly, it's a question of odds. Given the opportunity, the worst will prey on their own kind. Give me the money. Give me the money, honey, or mama gets it. Maybe she gets it anyway. <laughs> there are all kinds of hunters. Some hunt to survive. Some just like to watch things die. This is the best you can do, man. Too bad. Looks like you gotta die. Some hunt the hunters. 
I ain't my hand. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, damn. <laughs> he pierced his ear and then nailed it to a wall. Oh, that looks... Stay. Or the next one will be an inch higher. You punks live on the street. You see everything that goes on. But you're not talking because no one's asked you the right way. Don't tell him nothing. You ain't supposed to do this, man. We got rights. Yeah? You have the right to remain silent. Ow! He, like, flings the arrow. <laughs> have you ever had one of those days when nothing went right? Well, I've had one of those weeks, so I'm only going to ask once. Anything you looking for? Drugs, man? There's a guy at, at Magna Shipping. Not drugs. I'm looking for a guy who likes knives. And he likes to use them on women. I don't know what you're talking. You've seen him, whether you knew it or not. He lives here on the street. He must. He knows every corner, every hole. Maybe. Maybe what? There's this dude that cut Harry last month. The tunnel rat. Where do I find him? Underground. He lives down there. Splits the arrow. Passes out. I hear you've got a problem. A snooper. Nothing major. My people can handle it. They'd better. We've worked too hard to set up this deal. If anything goes wrong, you could lose that nice little umbrella that keeps the heavy crap off your head. Can you describe the man? Yeah, man, he was... And, and with the biggest... Well, he was with a nice and really great... She describes him as Errol Flynn. <laughs> That's so awesome. Underground. The future, built on the skeletal remains of the past. Bright and shiny on the surface, but gutted and decaying underneath. Buried and forgotten because no one likes to look at rotting beauty. This is his world. You can feel him here in the dark. The dark is his friend and his weapon. It surrounds him and protects him from outside. No one looks too closely at the shadows. They're afraid of what they might find. Newspaper clippings. Chicago Creeper confuses coppers. Killer stocks underground Atlanta. American tunnel rats fight Charlie on his own ground. Looks like he's a Purple Heart recipient, Vietnam veteran. This is him. Somewhere in this is the key to seven months of slaughter. Size seven, a little guy. Yeah, that's about right for a tunnel rat. He's one of these kids. Straight out of high school, when they should have been thinking about fast cars, suntan blondes, and long summer nights. They were being taught to kill. Only this one liked it. They tripped a switch somewhere inside him, turned him on. Trouble is, they forgot to turn him off. Oh, gets clocked from behind. Green Arrow. 
You know, that would never happen to the CW version of Green Arrow. Just saying. That was a joke. I've been watching you. You're very good. But you can't stop me. None of them could. Not in Chicago or Atlanta or here. This is my world. Underground. The horrors used to come in here. Tried to make it dirty. But I showed them. And I'll show you. Stop me. If you can. Whose idea was it to let him come here? Budry, open up. You said to keep him happy until we can ship him back up country. Didn't you see this guy's psych profile? Why do you think we brought him here in the first place? Oh, Jesus. What do we do? If somebody starts asking him questions, they're liable to ask what he was doing last night when a certain high-ranking political figure was knifed to death in his bathtub. If they link him to this, they can link us to that. Christ. And that's what we get for going outside the company for a hit. Why don't we just kill the crazy son of a bitch right now? You want to have to explain what a tunnel rat from... Tunnel rat from two cores is doing in Saigon without leave? No. We stick with the original plan. Budry just extended this for the four, fourth tour. He's looking to die. So? So we send him back up country into the heaviest shit we can find and let him get croaked like a good soldier. Eric Breen says, have a greatest of the stream, kids. I can't stay awake. RDV says, same. So, sounds like I'm doing my job, reading your bedtime story. What you do is you just take your phone with you into bed. Press it on your pillow with Ash streaming. And fall asleep as Ash reads you a story. Too slow, old man. Hi, baby. Want to spend your social security? Better move, or he's going to do it. There will be another dead one, just like the others. We got real trouble here. Wolchek is dead. Four of the others, too. I checked. I tell you, someone is killing us off. Somebody knows. What do you expect me to do about it? I don't know, but you better do something. I ain't taking no chances. I'm getting the hell out of town. Oh, assassin. Well, maybe the CW show is a little bit... Uh, taken off this book. I'm seeing a lot of sim similarities. Eric says, Ash is my Sandman. Aw. Artie says, I don't want Ash in bed with me. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. This is a very non orthodox comic book. I guess I should say there's a lot of uh experimentation being done here with storytelling and page layouts and things like that. I, I don't I don't disrespect it. It's very interesting though. Like this was this would not have been done in your normal mainstream comics. 
And I'm kind of glad for that. I'm glad that this was this was kind of a. I don't know if this was Elseworlds or not. I don't know if this was like direct continuity. It was just one of those like stories off on the side that you could think of it as continuity if you want or ignore it. Um, but I like when you do save the experimentation for that. Oh, God. Too late. Too slow. Kill him. Stop. Shoot. Uh -huh. Wow. Shoots the driver through the car. Shoot, shooting through a car windshield, that'd be tough. No evidence. Nothing. Just bodies. Newspaper reads, Robin Hood killer slays two in Seattle. Sometimes the killers are never caught. You've been holding out on me, bitch. No, baby, I swear. This was, there was this guy, he had a knife. Maybe they're jailed for other crimes. Or fall victim to others like themselves. Like this one? Newspaper reads, Slasher's death toll reaches 20. Who knows? Sometimes there are no answers, only more questions. Dun, dun, dun. It's also just the beginning of a story. Um, this definitely feels like it was written as a graphic novel bro broken into three parts, which is uh, I don't have a problem with. Um, let's see. Coming up. The death count rises while Green Arrow and Black Canary continue to probe the crime-ridden streets of Seattle for clues. And there's another mysterious archer in town perpetrating their own brand of violence. We learn more about this deadly killer as the investigation leads to the city docks and to a horrific climax. All right. What did you guys think of that first issue for those of you who have never read it before? And I guess for those of you who have read it before, did I do a okay enough job? <laughs> Obviously, I put a bunch of people to sleep. Um, let's see. Uh, RDV says, Robert Queen got around. Good night. Puts phone on pillow next to me. Wow. Well, I lost connection to the chat momentarily, according to the message in the chat. Um, Melissa says, what happened? I do not know. Um, Ed, did I don't know if you said hi to Ed, or if I said hi to Ed, but hello, Ed, if I didn't. <laughs> Anyone else who's in the background who I have not seen in chat, hello to you as well. Um, now, so I thought it'd be fun if I if I read this book, because Marani has talked about this for a long time. Uh, also, I just started reading the CW, sorry, watching the CW TV show, because I was like, you know, I just need, I need like a, a junky TV show. Something that I don't hate, but something that I don't need to pay attention to because shows that I'm like way into I, I don't want to have just off on the side I like to pay attention to it so there's I need it's, it's a weird thing I don't know if you guys have this if you have your TV shows that you just sort of like are good enough to pay half attention to to like just keep you the story and just curious but you're not super invested in um, I, you know I give the I can give the green arrow kind of shit there's some cringe in the show, but it's at least so far. I'm still only in the first season. I think I'm like six, six episodes in. At least it's not so far. It hasn't gone like all woke and stupid. Um, I do enjoy the fact that the actor that plays Oliver in the TV show 
that uh, he's got some parkour skills and he can do some pretty cool action stuff. I got some respect for that. Um, it makes for some cool, some decent action scenes. Um, I really like the foot chase scenes, the parkour. Um, I, th I thought those were, I, I was impressed. I was like, oh, that was cool. Um, I do like the mythos building, like the world building. I got to tell you, the parts that I'm most enjoying about the show are the historical parts, the where they go back and do the flashbacks of where he's on the island and he's like learning his skills. That's the part I love. And unfortunately, I know they only can do that so much. <laughs> then you're going to get that whole story. And I know it's like, but right now you're just like, oh, the, the, the show starts off where he's like basically just been rescued from the island. And that's it. And I was like, OK. And then as, it, as you go on, you get the flashbacks of stuff that he went through while he was there. And I was like, this is really cool. This is the part that's the most interesting is like the crazy shit that happened on the island, which to be honest, I, I wish it was a little even crazier than what actually had happened. But what happened here in the comic book, the comic book explains that he was like talking to a target shooter and then he like fell overboard and then he was on an island and he had to learn to shoot the dude. I got to tell you, I'm being hundred percent honest here. The CW version of the island origin is better. <laughs> this is so hokey. Like, yeah, I was talking to this target shooter guy about different kind of bows and then I was drinking gin and I fell over the boat and then I had to like learn to kill animals. Oh, and then at the end there were two drug druggies that were like growing marijuana on the island that he apprehends and takes their boat and rescues himself. I'm like, what? Now I don't know a Green Arrow Cannon, so I don't even know if that's Mike Grell revision, you know, pulling a Frank Miller. And kind of, or I'm I'm guessing not. I'm guessing that's the actual story. And Grell's just here. It is. This is what happened. <laughs> um, I hope so. Because if you're gonna do revisionist history, you better not make it dumb like that. Green Arrow is seriously in need of a Frank Miller upgrade on that respect. Like it needs to be. Like what Frank Miller did for Batman, that that origin, like it's like, oh, okay, it's not just his parents died. Like let's let's go into like how horrific it was and all the things that he went through afterwards, and let's really dive into it. I think I think for CW's part, they tried to do that. Part of the problem with that CW show is that they really are trying to make him Batman. Like I swear, like even down to the whole, like oh look, I'm gonna pretend to be like a a rich, you know, dilettante who just likes sleeping around and partying all the time. So no one will think I'm actually the hero because I'm just a big goofy party animal guy, you know, like a rich billionaire. I'm like, this is exactly the Bruce Wayne scenario. And I get that Green Arrow has some similarities to Batman, on that, but do they really? Oh, well, I it, Show's not as bad as... I, I know it's going to get worse. And why is Green Arrow... I, I, I don't know. It, it, here in the book, he's with uh, Black Canary. My limit, my very limited understanding of Green Arrow is that it's him and Black Canary. <laughs> in the TV show, he's with the Felicity character who's stupid and makes me cringe. And I don't know. Uh, Paulo is here. Welcome. Good morning, Paulo. Uh, he says, Longbow Hunters. I can't believe I only read that once. I can't either. Ronnie says, this miniseries is Green Arrow's Dark Knight. Do you mean Green Arrow's Dark Knight in the sense that it's like the best thing ever done for Green Arrow? Or in the sense that it's similar to the themes of Dark Knight? Because it doesn't take place. This isn't like a future thing. By the way, speaking of Dark Knight, again, I'm a total Green Arrow noob, and that's because I have a big, strong bias <laughs> against bow people. Like, I love Robin Hood. Robin Hood's fantastic, and I like that Green Arrow themes himself after Robin Hood because that helps me make sense of the character better. <laughs> I'm like, why is... But 
superheroes with bows and arrows are dumb to me. If I was a kid growing up in the 50s, it would probably be way freaking cooler. Like bows and arrows were cool. Look at I grew up in the 80s when Rambo used a bow instead of machine guns. Like there was a time where like bows were just cool. Sorry, it's not in it's not now. It's not modern times. When you run around and you're fighting you know, super villains, when you're using a bow and arrow, it's it's dumb. It's sorry. I I, I just I, I just never look if you want it I'm not saying other people can't like it that's fine it's just not for me it doesn't work for me I just um I don't know where I was going with this <laughs> oh but there's the one time that I remember where Green Arrow I loved Green Arrow like I I loved Green Arrow and that's in The Dark Knight Returns because it's true, kids. Frank Miller makes everything better. And holy shit. Green Arrow and Dark Knight Returns is one of the fucking coolest things I've ever... <laughs> one of the greatest... There's some great, all-time great comic book scenes. And and so many of them are Frank Miller. <laughs> like, um, One of them, of course, is the, you know, the death of Elektra. You know, where, you know... Uh, He's impressed by Electra, and he's like, oh, that's really good. But me, I'm magic. That's a great scene. But when Green Arrow shows up for, for Batman <laughs> when he's fighting Superman, and Green Arrow only has one arm, and he's shooting a bow with one arm, that's when I was like, oh, my God. Fucking badass. <laughs> fighting Superman. When you can fight Superman... With a bow and arrow, and you only have one arm, you you, you get the balls of the balls of adamantium award. That's just there's no topping that. So, anyways, uh, let's see. Ed says, "Can we get another thirty minute alarm?" <laughs> Jerk. Oh, Paula Costa says, "Felicity Smoke." Was originally Firestorm's stepmother, I believe. Oh, God. Arrow TV show had to steal supporting characters from all over the place. Green Arrow has hardly any side characters. Really? Doesn't he have, like, Red Arrow and Arsenal and Black Canary? <laughs> doesn't he have, like, a doesn't like a whole family of Green Arrow characters? Um, I don't know. I, I, I say this in genuine questioning because I really am a novice. Because I stay away from bow and arrow characters. I said same thing with Hawkeye. I'm like, <laughs> and now imagine, now you know why I hate Kate Bishop with a seething passion that is unrivaled. Because not only is she a bow, a bow character, but she's stupid and a bitch. Like you just wrap it all into one. Like if you, if you could take one of the worst characters ever created and then make her make him a total bitch. And a Mary Sue. And then on top of it, make them a bow and arrow character. That's just icing on the cake. Um, Marani says, this redefines Green Arrow. And the changes in his mythos have stuck ever since. Okay. Um, would you say might be maybe a more fair comparison to say this is like Green Arrow's year one? Um, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm being sincere here i'm not because because dark knight was sort of revolutionary it took batman into a direction you know gave us the first batman versus like the true real batman versus you know batman kills superman like crazy shit this dark future like oh what the hell like where could batman possibly go but that didn't really define where batman went in the present the, like year one did year one transformed there was batman before issue 404 and then there was batman after issue 407 there, that there's you know i'm just wondering because uh, again i don't know uh, i hate Zack snyder dc comics to not my cup of tea why do you hate Zack snyder Zack snyder is fucking great i love Zack snyder Oh, man, <laughs> the shit, how he's rubbing in people's faces 
um, about his Justice League. I just I think it's so awesome. I don't expect the Justice League movie to be great. To be honest, I have not liked his DC movies for the most. I mean, there are things about them that I like. I own Man of Steel. I own Batman versus Superman. The director's cut. The only way you should watch that movie is a director's cut. Um, and I own. Wait, that's it. That's because I don't own Justice League. The only other one. Yeah, I didn't get didn't get Justice League because I had heard it was monumentally terrible. And I just felt bad. Like, I knew that wasn't his film. Like, he, his daughter committed suicide. He had to step away. Um, I think it's funny that he's getting so much hate for this Snyder Cut thing. He He's doing it, like, he had to leave the film. His daughter committed suicide. Like, it's awful. Like, it... The trauma that he's went through. Like, I just, he's... But for him to, like, come and, like, fans wanted this done and he's just, like, now that he's the grieving, he's got enough time that he's, like, I can step back in this director's seat. I can finish this film and try to give the vision that I had promised I was going to give when I set out to make it originally. Look, whether you end up liking the film or not, that's kind of beside the point. There's plenty of people that didn't like Batman versus Superman and, you know, that's that's totally fine. You're totally free to not like movies. But there are people that do like him. Like, he is making them for fans. There's, and I'm a Zack Snyder fan. I don't think his his mainstream DC stuff is good. I like I like uh, Watchmen. I really like um, his previous stuff. Sucker Punch and 300 are my, are my favorite. 300 is astonishing. Still, to this day, in my opinion the best comic book adaptation movie that's ever been done. <laughs> like it, it is a perfect adaptation. It does everything right. It, it's, it is a clinic on how to take a comic and, and put it on the screen. Um, that movie is fantastic. And of course it doesn't hurt that Frank Miller wrote a tr- tremendous story. Oh, did I say Frank Miller again? I'm sorry. I know that triggers some people. Ed says, what's with all the dislikes? Am I getting dislikes? Who's disliking me? Oh, are you talking about Zack Snyder? Some people just have a burr up their ass for him for some reason. I don't know. I like him. Um, I like that he's not all wokey woke. And I like, you know what? I like that he has his vision. I like that he has, look, this is what he's going to do. This is what he wants to do. All the time we're sitting here and we're talking about movies. Well, we're not talking about movies. We're talking about, um, you know, when we're talking about movies, I guess is the right way to say it. We're we're talking about like, oh, it sucks that like the cave, like it was like Disney Star Wars. I say, oh, you know, the cave to do this. And it's like, but Zack Snyder is doing for the most part, I, I do think actually a lot of his movies are screwed up by the studio, um, which is why he has so many director's cuts and why the director's cuts are always major improvements. If you watch the director's cut of Batman versus Superman versus the theatrical release, look, the director's cut doesn't turn it into a great movie, but it turns it into a way better movie. Like the first, yeah, and and then Watchmen. What? Do you, you have to see see the ultimate cut of Watchmen to get the, you know, that's, that was his vision. Um, same thing with uh, sucker punch, watch the director's cut. Um, anyways, uh, where was I going with this? Oh yeah. We, we want, we want directors and filmmakers to have sincere, like stay true to their vision and not just try to like, Oh, I'm going to be woke or I'm going to like to sell out to, you know what the fans demand that I do. Like, Say what you will. Zack Snyder puts out his properties as much as he can. Like, he doesn't apologize for what he's doing. And uh, I'll respect that. I may not like your product. I may go, oh, too bad. I wish it was more of something I like. But I would rather have more filmmakers like that that are putting out what their vision is and letting it just sink or swim on its own versus, 
you know, the Disney method, right? You know, like, oh, Mulan, let's let's try to make a Mulan that appeals to fans of the, the Disney cartoon and it it fits communist Chinese requirements. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, anyways, um, where did my chat screen go? It disappeared on me. Um, this DCEU is not the real iconic version. It's Snyder's cultist garbage made by a nihilistic man. Well, you're, you're correct. It's not the iconic version. But it's okay to not have everything be that. You know, when Frank Miller did... Here, let, me, let me address this for a second, Melissa. When Frank Miller came along and did Batman Year One, or even before that when he did Dark Knight Returns, that was not the DC iconic version. That was completely dark, nihilistic version of Batman. But he forever changed the character. And I'm not saying everyone has to like Dark Knight Returns or Batman Year One. But if you don't like Batman Year One, shame on you. But I'm just kidding. Um, and you don't have to like his DC stuff. I, I get it. Like, I'm not a super fan either. There are certain things as a fan of movies, as a filmmaking, that when I watch his films that he does really well, that I really enjoy seeing. The whole the, the product as a whole, it's kind of like um, brownies with walnuts. One of the few foods in the world that I don't like is walnuts. So if I eat a brownie that's got walnuts on it, which is very common, I'll pick the walnuts off, and then I eat the brownie. <laughs> I don't go, oh, the brownie's terrible because it's got walnuts on it. Um, you, you think about uh, X-Men. X-Men was garbage before Chris Claremont took it over. It, it ran for a hundred issues. Like it was, it was being canceled. <laughs> it was not good. Sometimes sticking with the iconic way isn't always the right thing to do. Sometimes you need to break free. Um, and and try new things. When when Simonson came onto Thor back in the day, he wasn't sticking to the iconic, you know, Thor. <laughs> I smash my staff into the ground and I gain the powers of Thor. No, he went and was like, I'm gonna make Thor, the actual god Thor, living in Asgard. You know, um, so I'm not telling you what to like. What like what you like. That's fine. But consider that while you're being critical of certain things. Just because it may not have executed well to your liking doesn't necessarily make it not worth the attempt. I can look at Snyder's DCEU and say, you know what? It was kind of a swing and a miss. You, you didn't nail it. But I will not begrudge him for trying. You know, yeah, I don't think everything needs to be made cookie cutter paint by numbers i don't want that and i think when you do that when you when you expect creators to always just nope you've got to follow these strict rules and do it exactly like this that's when you don't get the great stuff all the great things green bow long or sorry green bow green arrow longbow hunters just from reading the i can already tell without even having much knowledge of green arrow at all I can already tell this book never would have been made had that been the case, right? Um, and it's it sounds like everyone that does know Green Arrow points to this and says, yeah, this is about as good as Green Arrow's ever been. This is like the hallmark of Green Arrow. You need to allow for that. Sometimes you're going to swing and a miss. Use a baseball analogy. Too bad Eric Green's on here. A baseball analogy. A home run hitter is also usually – Someone who has a high amount of strikeouts, right? Um, the, 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 the guys on your team that hit the most home, run, home runs typically also have the most strikeouts because they're always swinging for the fences. But when they hit those home runs, it's exciting. And that's kind of what I'm getting at. Comics, we should allow for that. 
and we should forgive the strikeouts because look, maybe next time it'll be a home run. Um, all right. Melissa says she's got to get going. She, I don't know. Hopefully, I don't know if she heard, but, uh, it wasn't just for Melissa. Those are just my opinions. Um, Melissa, if you are still hearing, I hope you had a good night. Um, Ed, Ronnie is still here. 1930 Superman hurt people and drugged them. I like that they changed it about him. <laughs> right? Original Superman was... <laughs> Superman the dick. Uh, yeah, plus, old, didn't old school Batman shoot people? Um, sometimes, you know, anyways, I'm not going to, I'm not going to beat that's a dead horse. I want to thank you guys for showing up. It's about quitting time here. Uh, almost, almost midnight on the Pacific coast, which is about a good time to round up the stream. That's kind of my target number. I hope you enjoyed this book. I know it was short notice. I am going to finish this up on Tuesday and Thursday. It's three issues. Um, and then for special for those of you that are still listening, you guys will get to know on the following week, I am going to be doing um, Jupiter's, I don't know if it's, I think that they're calling it because they, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitating here because I know the name has been altered and changed. Ju I'm going to say Jupiter's Legacy. There are two stories that Mark Millar did. Jupiter's Legacy and Jupiter's Circle. And uh, it's being adapted into uh, a series for Netflix that um, there's some good buzz. And I believe it's just all being rebranded as Jupiter's Legacy. Everything is Jupiter's Legacy, even the Jupiter Circle is being re So I'm going to call it Jupiter's Legacy. Anyways, I'm going to be doing Jupiter's Legacy um, after that. So if you're here, you get a little notice. Um, I'll be covering those because the Netflix show is coming out, and I thought, hey, it'd be fun to read those. I bought them all, and for whatever reason, I didn't because it gets lost in my digital library, and I'm like, man, I really want to read these. Everyone says Eric Breen, who's in Sleepy Town right now, uh, said they're phenomenally good. He really likes them. So um, I'm looking forward to reading them. It's got, uh, it's, well, it's Mark Ballar, and it's his... Well, they're doing the show, so stay tuned for that, and uh, that again, that'll be the following week. So thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Um, as always, leave comments down below, like, subscribe. Don't like if you don't if you don't like to say why, say what you would prefer better. Uh, if you have comic suggestions to read, I am fully happy to take suggestions. It has to be a comicsology book, and it has to be one I have access to. So either Comicsology Unlimited, or a comic that's in my library, or a comic that can be donated uh, for the cause. And uh, I'd be happy to read it on air, uh, as long as it's not either complete dog shit or it's not inappropriate. I, I'm not going to read hentai or something. <laughs> so... Um, Let's see. Shofar says, how come you don't show your receipts anymore? You've been reading Yo-Ho-Ho -Ho material? Um, well, my receipts, uh, I'm not sure. It's comiXology. Like, it's... Here it is. That's why it has to be on comiXology, because Yo-Ho-Ho -Ho material, I don't, I don't read on here. So, I don't, I don't know. There's no receipt for this. I'm just here. It's, you can see it's Comixology. There's green book, but I have I have Comixology Unlimited, so I can read the books on there. So all of all of the Green Arrow series is available on Unlimited. So there you go, and uh, yeah, that's it. Good night.